Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and theres, welcome to another episode of MMAs or MMAs. Yeah, and don't forget the sciences. Please don't. So we had kind of a lull if you're looking at it from the point of view of mixed martial arts and sciences from this point of view. But we take a more holistic view, a more full spectrum view. So we're gonna come at you today and talk to you about, Jiu-Jitsu, about professional wrestling, about bare knuckle boxing, about your more standard gloved boxing, and of course about mixed martial arts events that are coming up today. What do you want to start with? I think we should start with Kasai. That was the big, big event for me this past weekend. Yeah, we watched that one together. So yeah, yeah. Um, it was definitely, you know, it's one of my favorite rule sets. I would say. I don't know. There's still still a few things that aren't perfect, as with any rule set in Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, but it is an exciting rule set. I do enjoy it. I think it's up there with quintet for me in terms of rule sets. Um, I think you were telling me something about it's Marcelo's. Yeah, favorite, it's right? his preferred rule set. Like he said that if he would come back, he wants to do under because I don't know if it's because they pay him or they want to pay him more. That'd remember. be funny if they did. Yeah. But I'd love to see him come back and grapple yeah. Damian Maya or something oh, like that. That'd be fantastic. Or yeah. Rafael Lobato. Yeah, that'd be amazing. But anyway, um, a lot of great talent. I think it was the two hundred five tournament. Um, and light heavyweight, was baby. Really looking forward to Craig Jones, obviously. Really looking forward to a lot of high level guys. It was stacked for like Pena. Um, the, the champ, yeah, the Kane and Duarte. <laughs> Kane and Duarte, man, 21 years old, trains at what I try, I am compelled to say is probably the best mat in the world currently. I know you would disagree with me. I know we were talking about all the New York mats, the uh, Henzo Gracie, Unity, Marcelo Garcia. But the new 10th planet in NYC. All those New York guys are great, but what they're doing at Atos is unbelievable. And that's Galvao's gym in San Diego. Yeah. Keenan, uh, Barbosa, the Hulk, um, obviously Keenan Duarte. 21 years old, black belt, running through everything. He just won pans for his yeah. division, comes and now go, does no gi, goes, runs through everybody. I mean, it was mainly on points. I don't think he had too many submissions, but it was phenomenal. But the one submission he did get, he took Craig Jones. It was the back most important submission. And so it was the most in. important. You know what? It, it almost seemed as if he was doing a sort of misdirection because he defeated everyone on points. Even in the end, he beat Tex Johnson, who had earlier heel hooked Pena into fantastic another dimension yeah. to make him pull out of the tournament. He yeah. could he could not continue. He couldn't do the third place. He yeah. was supposed to go against Craig, but instead Kane and Duarte got him. But anyway, he beats everyone by points except for the one dude who's known as the submission guy. It almost looks like it was misdirection to prove a point. Maybe, maybe. I think maybe the rule set kind of, that's the one part of the rule set that kind of like leads to people wanting to play it safe. Like it's It changes really, it. Know. We've, we've said many times on this program before that the incentives of the game are going to change how you behave. For me, I thought six minutes was too short. The super fights had 10 minute rounds. I would have liked to see everything that. I, I think it, it allows for a more smooth game and I'm not convinced that Everyone, I thought it was an overall quick program. I, I'm not convinced that everyone's going to turn their head away and say, oh, this is so boring just because it's four more minutes. Right. No, I agree. I agree. I think that I was, we, we didn't, you didn't have disagreement with me there. Um, the one guy that was like super impressive he, in the rule set was uh, Aaron Tex Johnson, who ended up finishing second, I believe, and had probably the most impressive submission of the night. He had two inside heel hooks, one on uh, Jackson Souza, one on Felipe Pena. And that's the one I'm talking about, the one on Felipe Pena, which you could maybe argue that was a little bit um, dirty just because of how long it was held. But you, for me, you got to go as long as the ref tells you to go. Yeah, the that's refs the have issue. discretion, and we've said this before, but when the Gypsy King, Tyson Fury, was knocked down by Deontay Wilder, the Bronx Bomber, we realized all these different people, Deontay himself, were trying to time, oh, was this an objective 10 seconds? But you know what? Just as the planets have different orbits, different refs have different decisions and discretions. And so I think this is the same case. Mm -hmm. You have to play to the whistle, you have to play to the ref. So I'm with you on there. Um, yeah, so I think Tex, is actually competing at ADCC this year, and I'm excited to see him. Although from his Instagram, I'm not too sure if he's gonna be back in time since he's gonna take time off to go to rehab, I believe. Sports rehab or? 
Not sure. He didn't specify. It could most likely have a personal oh. issue type rehab. So best of luck to him getting back for ADCC. He's super impressive as a big guy with the leg lock game he has. Uh, trains, yeah. trains with Eddie Cummings. I'm sure he's getting solid teaching on that front. Um, very excited to see him at 2 And I'm sure the community on Instagram is ripping into him. It seemed like Gordon Ryan is the only one that came to his defense. Oh, yeah. I saw that, actually. Yeah. Well, knowing as a, he's also a leg locker, he probably felt that he needed to, just in case he runs into that in the future. <laughs> yeah. I, I uh, thought I was impressed by someone we've talked about in this program before when we're talking about the combat jiu-jitsu um, matches. John Thor Blank, one of the interesting things about him is, you know, he did not have a stellar performance. He, he did lose several times. But what I liked is that he did actually have one of the only submissions of the night. He submitted Pedro Mar Marinho by arm lock. And he really brought it to Craig Jones in, in their match. He was and trying to wrestle. A lot, a lot really, of guys were butt scooting. They were you know? running away. They were running away. <laughs> he was trying to the wrestle. Yeah. And the rules that yeah. we're talking about. He wasn't interested in wrecking up points. He was only going for the submission. And the thing is, he's much smaller. If you look at a lineup of all of these dudes, he's the smallest dude out there. Yeah. And he usually fights at 185. Even when we talked about him during combat jiu-jitsu, he was the 185 champ who went up to fight the the heavyweights yeah you're the absolute big there was big actually team. an absolute tournament that he was fighting in which is incredible it's yeah. just incredible yeah he's and a, he's, so a he's a gamer i, I like the heart that yeah, i saw in for him. sure that's for sure um other than that i think craig jones was who i was really excited to see and he had an okay tournament um he was pretty solid he beat all the guys he was supposed to beat except the guy who ended up being champion uh canon duarte yeah um, Kenny Dorchett was so impressive because he, he took Craig back and submitted him. That Yeah, I think um, we were saying off camera that it seemed almost as if he was doing misdirection because he was defeating yeah. everyone by points. But the one guy who's known as the submission specialist, that's the guy who said, okay, points are cool, but how's your back? Yeah, yeah, yeah phenomenal. I think that he's training probably at the best mat in the world currently. And I don't feel it's a hot take to say that. To say that Atos Jiu Jitsu is pretty well, the best match. Certainly a hot take. But they, they are pretty much <laughs> we'll winning any tournament that they're in at any belt level from blue to black. Their guys are winning everything. I, I would like to see them in the, the type of uh, OG challenge matches, the type of thing that Halleck Gracie versus Gordon Ryan did. The no time limit yeah. submission only format. Dude, I mean, Kanan's a guy who just won pans. He's a gi guy who wins a ton of tournaments in the gi. Yeah, but he's not going, respect. He's doing world no gi, IBJJF. Now he's doing Kasai, and he's probably going to get an ADCC. I respect it, man, and I think it's mat time. You know, honestly, I think these are the type of dudes who are five to seven times a week, and with uh, with a legend, you know, teaching. He's, them. He's, he's training with the Hulk, Lucas Barbosa. He's training with Keenan Cornelius. These are like high level guys, and the thing is, he's only twenty one. Yeah, dude, twenty one year old black belt. I'm like, how do you even get that? You must start when you're like ten or some shit. I'm like, I don't know. It's a little bit suspect. These guys that get the black belt so early, but he, I mean, he sure as hell has the talent. If you're it's, going by merit, it's. I mean, he's displaying it, like you said, he's against the highest level. Yeah. People would often joke online that there's only one person who could beat Craig Jones. Now clearly, there's more than one. He, I mean, yes, I would say that, but I think anyone can have a bad day too in the office. I don't know. Like, yeah. You can have a bad role. Sometimes you have a bad role and you lose to somebody that you're like you should not be losing to, and you yeah. just have like a shitty moment. Was there anything else from the Kasai event that stuck out? To oh, you? tons. But I, I wasn't really finished with the the Canon point and Atos. I was like when when I said that they're the best mat in the world, it's, it really showed because what New York is known for having some of the best mats in the world, you know, like with Henzo, with Unity, and uh, Marcelo Garcia, they dominated the Kasai for the past five events because Kasai is usually in New York. And yeah, three Henzo was in the audience going, yeah. Boha! Boha! <laughs> I didn't see, the, the, the camera didn't go on him then, it was on him on another yeah. time, but I know that voice. <laughs> I've been at a seminar before out in Tracy at a Charles Gracie's main gym. Yeah, I mean, but Atos was showing up. And I was a little disappointed that my boy Edwin did not get his win against uh, local Tarzana. Neither neither did Hamulo. Yeah, they were not, Northridge. Gracie Baja didn't do that great. Gracie Baja they Northridge. Great Gracie Baja Tarzana. The and there guy, was yeah, there was a the Pedro. Main, Pedro, yeah, the yeah. one was submitted by Thor Blank. I think we had three. They had three duds. You know, uh, it was, it was I mean, impressive. it's hard to say dud like to your point. This of is course. the highest Dante level. Leon is a high level. The guy. highest level of competition. And I think Baral lost to Tinoco, who was a Marcelo Garcia black star, like, who was, in my opinion, butt scooting and running away from him, not engaging as often, and intentionally 
going off. Munho was doing that too, kind of too. So that's his teammate. But. You know, uh, just to touch on this right before we, we leave the Kasai subject, it was also really interesting to watch Gordon Ryan's, um, I don't know if this is correct, girlfriend? I'm not quite sure. With or his sister. Or his sister. <laughs> it all depends on how you look at some of his Instagram posts. Yeah, but, Sunny. Uh, yeah, Santaro, so yeah. I don't know her last name, but she had a great sub, a fantastic guillotine. Yeah, yeah she, she turned, came. She went into a mounted guillotine. Where was she on bottom at to get into the yeah, mount? Yeah, she flipped into, she the, flipped mount. into the mount and, it was and put the hand behind like an anaconda, head. but then yeah. it stayed back in the guillotine. And the know. S grip. It was phenomenal. Yeah. It was a great sub. And uh, and then she went and kissed his hand. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean she's training with a great gym, doing her death squad. So she's one of the death squad. <laughs> she's one of the death squad. Yeah, she's in those instructional videos if you check those out. Yeah, the guard passing one. Um, speaking, any other grappling events you want to talk about? Yeah, you know what? I I just um, I I have to go back and I, I plan to go back and watch the footage. But WrestleMania took place, and along with WrestleMania, there were a million events going on in the greater tri-state area surrounding pro wrestling. And Josh Barnett, you know, who's one of our favorite MMA characters or characters, he had an event called Bloodsport that actually came around before him. It pre-exists him, but he took the reins on this time. And one of the things that was interesting about this event was a lot of people commenting online that they weren't sure whether or not the rules were real MMA or pro wrestling. And I thought that that was what funny. What a win for him. I'm what a win. Dude, I'm telling you, and it's funny to me because that's the intent. The idea to blend reality and fiction to the point where they don't know is very strong. And it goes to the point that we keep hammering in about incentives and, and rule sets making everything. So they were on a platform of reminds me of like the Bankai tournament at Dragon Ball Z because there's there's no ring um, um, ropes and the there's fans no are just cage. right around the, the fans thing. are right there right in the splash zone in the sweat zone they could easily fall off the ring but there are such professional uh, there's such professionals and you know it's interesting people like Josh Barnett people like um, the the Gracie killer Sakuraba have always listed pro wrestling on their records Hickson fought a guy twice in Pride that had pro wrestling as a yeah. style. Pro wrestling has been around. There's always been this leap. Jack Swagger is making the leap from the WWE into Bellator. But then you have uh, the Ronda Rouseys and all, all the other people, even going Kane Velasquez. Forth, yeah. Going, going, yeah, going to pro wrestling. DC has talked about either commenting or, or being Brock, in it. Brock, Brock himself has gone. He's he might have a fight with DC coming in August. Yeah, yeah heavyweight or, or champion or of the world. Not just the fight, the heavyweight champion of the world title fight. So in any event, one of the things that stuck out to me is in just talking about the greater philosophy of combat sports, I think that, and this is a point I made on Twitter that some people didn't like, but I think it's the harsh reality, the fact that we don't have, the fact that we have gloves, or however many ounces they are in mixed martial arts, to me, makes it in some, in some way inauthentic. And so in some way, we always realize we are putting on a show. It is an entertainment. And so I think people are overly critical of pro wrestling. Now, you can't just think everyone in pro wrestling would be great at fighting. But in the same way, you can't count CM everyone Punk out. Was an example of that. Yeah, but you can't count out their skills immediately. Because I think there, there actually is more crossover there than we believe. And I think a good kind of transition would be to talk about BKFC, the Bare Knuckle Fight Club. Because we always talk about how a bare knuckle MMA would be more realistic. But yeah, did you have anything to say about uh, the Russian Hammer, the GOAT versus Jason Knight? Um, I can't say that I paid and watched for that fight, yeah. but I, I definitely checked out um, a lot of the, the highlights and things that were, the few minutes that I did check out of it, it seemed pretty intense. It seemed like a real back and forth brawl. Um, and their faces afterward really showed it. Uh, Jason Knight looked like Chucky out there. You saw that movie. Yeah, I heard, I heard a lot of those references and I grew up watching uh, yeah. those movies, so that touched me. One thing I'll say is that um, reading about the history of jiu-jitsu right now and how it was developed, and what's interesting is that the, the samurai, when they were fighting each other, wanted to disarm each other. So kind of the older Japanese art before jiu-jitsu, Komuichi, was all about disarming your opponent and taking them to the ground so that you could then finish them. And the reason is you can't punch really armor. Like, that's stupid. But even when you take the armor off and you bring it to a civilian setting, eventually, the more you punch someone, you, you're going to break your hand or you're going to damage someone. There's no longevity 
in bare knuckle striking. So while I think Left Way and the Bare Knuckle Fight Club and the World Bare Knuckle F Federation and all the, these kind of striking organizations that are bare knuckle are interesting, I think it only makes the most functional sense when grappling is involved because really the invention of gloves is for the longevity of the fighter's hands, not their brains, which is an interesting trade-off because in protecting their hands, we've seen more brain damage and I think the reverse would happen. I think we'd have more fucked up faces like Chucky, like you're saying, well, and with think, less brain damage. I think Lobov was interviewed afterwards and he said that it's cosmetic, the damages from bare knuckle, whereas it's not so much internal brain damage Correct. that he gets from, from uh, gloves. But I think I still I think there still needs to be more studies done. I don't think enough studies have been of done. Of course, and always, you know, so if you're a real scientist, you always believe in applying rigorous studies to it but i think it's just that I it just looks think savage is why it has such a stigma and yeah. i think the stigma needs to be removed i think it's only legal currently in mississippi and wyoming and i think that's like silly legalize it yeah but i think by i think by the end of the year it'll probably be in vegas i hope so man i hope so but but more than that i want bare knuckle mma and i think that with the savagery that we've seen at least perception wise with the striking it will encourage more grappling to go on. I, I, I don't know if we talked about it last time, but one of my favorite grappling matches within an MMA rule set is an old school match between Diego Sanchez and Nick Diaz. And, yeah. and if, you, if you go watch that in the UFC Fight Library, there's a plug for you. It, it's just like three rounds of some of the most beautiful transitions, counters, and everything while always threatening striking. And I think that more and more matches would look like that. And I think it's more authentic to fighting. So I think the Bare Knuckle let Fight me, Club helps us at least think about that. Sure, but let me ask you a hypothetical question along these lines. And I know some grapplers will laugh at this because I think it's kind of become a meme at this point. If you're saying that you want the purest, most like a street fight event possible. While still being safe. While still being safe. How do you feel about biting? Um... I think biting should be because the, a lot of the, the casuals answer to grappling doesn't work is if you try to grab me and hold on to me, I'm going to bite you in, yeah. a, in the street. You, no one's going to bite you in the ring or anywhere. So yeah. if you're going to remove everything, how do you feel about biting? If you ask me, do we go with the rule set now or do we go with my ideal rule set plus biting? I would take the, the latter. You would take biting. I would take biting if that's what I had to do to get rid of gloves. But in groin strikes and make all of that legal. I think the most important are the soccer kicks. And I think Josh Barnett is on the record as saying, for example, if not soccer kicks, you should at least allow knees like they do in one championship. See, so if you, see what, if you see what I'm getting at, I'm trying to just take it to its real limit and just make them gladiators and go to death. You mean just, yeah, go to, go death. to the death. That's why I think, <laughs> I think biting, eye gouging, and fish hooks and groin strikes are the only things. So, but see, when you start making these things, these cuts, then we're getting away from what it would be like on the street. Correct. And that same argument of bare knuckles is made. What I'm making is basically a constitutionalist argument. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a small government of sure, MMA. Sure. Yes. No, no, I just, just food for thought. I yeah. wasn't just You're saying I should go either big government or anarchy. I'm saying what about just a little government? I feel like, I feel like localism. Yeah. Um, so I think there were... Transitioning from bare knuckle to the, what you would believe is not real. Like love and love. Boxing, glove boxing. Yeah. There's a fantastic... Not, not real, but no, less I real. Know, less I'm real. I'm messing with you. Um, More imaginary. It's Lomachenko fight week, guys. Ooh, baby. You know, when it's Lomachenko fight week, I get excited. <laughs> and he's he's not fighting the sexiest of opponents. Krola, kind of a journeyman, but fantastic story. Uh, he has had an up and down career, but he's always shown up for big fights. He's got a lot of heart. He had this crazy backstory where he got hurt uh, defending his neighbor from being burglarized. Bare knuckle? I, it was it, it really must have been a situation like we just talked about, but he ended up like getting his he his skull smashed in and Jesus. his ankle completely broken and dislocated to the point where he had to have plates put in. And the doctor said he wasn't going to be a competitive fighter anymore at all. Came back, went on a streak, has been fantastic. Is the lightweight challenger currently? 
Um, and he's a gamer. He's a hard worker. I mean, he, to get to that point, to come back from not being able to fight anymore. Oh, I love it. From be, and then now he's on the way to fighting Lomachenko for a title. And he's he's not a young guy. He's not an up and comer. He's a vet, you know. And he might not as, have as much boxing technique as Lomachenko. He might not be as decorated as Lomachenko. <laughs> but he's gonna come in and he's gonna give. He might not have taken four years of dance lessons like Lomachenko. He might not have done sambo well, like Lomachenko. It sounds like he he's doing a like song song. He also might not be in the Matrix like Lomachenko. Yeah. Lomachenko might be taking him to the Matrix, <laughs> Bro. but he's not in the Matrix. I feel like you're Gaston's hype beast from Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, um, can we get any predictions out of you for that match? I think Vasily is going to be upset that he did not finish his last fight, and he's going to finish this fight. And I think it will be uh, Krolo retiring in the seventh corner retirement. Interesting. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I'm just excited to see Lomachenko fight anytime, anywhere. The man that is a wrestler. Oh, I mean, put if, me on. if you want to study boxing, let's say if you're MMA focused. Just don't think that you know stu studying Lomachenko is a waste of time. Right? Yeah. Because it's not MMA. His technique is unbelievable, and it's his movement. Oh, it's his, the way he angles, his pivoting, 100%. the way he's in a spot before you can even think about the spot he was before. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. The um, recently uncovered EPO findings and TJ Dillashaw put aside. One of the smart things TJ did it is training with Lomachenko yeah. to get a different look to improve his MMA. Absolutely, and I think it was just boxing sparring too. It wasn't like any anything else. No you don't even think it's more time. Straight up boxing yeah. sparring, and he probably lost those sparring matches. Yeah. But let me tell you, if you can even hang with him, that's fantastic. I think TJ really unfortunate that he got popped for the Lance Armstrong and the and the cyclist choice of. P PEDs that you that know, endurance drug, the baby. endurance drug, the, the one that you know, reaches your, your blood cells. Um, He's trying it, to get that uh, Himalayan endurance. Yeah, it's really unfortunate. He was one of my favorites. Um, I really hope the rest of the Sam Calavitas boys are not on that, and I, that it was an isolated incident. That's local, right? Yeah. Orange yeah. County. We want the SoCal people, the SoCal gyms yeah. to stand out. Yeah, we really liked what they were doing. Hopefully, it's only just him. Um, but speaking about great boxing and MMA and getting onto the card that's also happening this coming weekend, yeah, is, UFC we talked about UFC is probably what I think is the best or second best boxer in the featherweight division, and that's Max Holloway. And I think Max Holloway is going to put on a show against Dustin Poirier. Do you think he's going to win? You know, I think he is, but if anyone has a chance it's going to be Dustin because Dustin's ability on the counter punches, yeah. he's got a lot of power and Max has been taking hits from 45ers for a while. Yeah. Not that he can't take a hit from Dustin's a 155. Dustin's a former 45er. They fought. Sure, but Dustin's talked about so that much bigger than he was when he was a 145er yeah. and everyone says how he has this grappling advantage but if you come in on Dustin, he's got a fantastic counter as he showed against Gagey and he can put on the pressure as well but Max is a different type of animal. Yeah. And Speaking of the Gagey match, you didn't really see him Try to grapple Gagey. I mean, no, he, he, he made a few he attempts. Game. He made a few attempts, but Gagey's defense is also Underrated. so stellar. Yeah. Max has stellar takedown D two, but not quite as stellar. I'd say. I mean, Ortega couldn't even get a lick. Couldn't yeah. even get a close. But he's not. Shot. Ortega's not. Uh, the, but in my opinion, a master of offensive jujitsu. He's a master of defense. Well, it's also it's also the fight IQ that comes into play, and I'm not criticizing Ortega on this, but I think it's. Um, at the beginning, the the bravado of trying to box with Max Holloway. Yes, you, you want know? to beat someone with and, their best. Right, right, and he came forward at Max, and Max yeah. loves that. And eventually, he stopped coming forward because he was yeah. like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> that was a corner retirement too. Yeah, fourth, yeah. fourth round was uh, it? It was. Um, and I don't think Dustin will do quite that. I don't think Dustin's gonna meet Max in the middle. It's gonna be more of a counter game. Watch it where you can hit him with a big shot, and then maybe take to grappling. Um, but Dustin's really fucking good all, everywhere so well-rounded that i think that he can really give max problems and you know what one punch can put max out there's no doubt in my mind that dustin can put max out with one punch but is he going to win a decision over max at where they're at right now i don't think so yeah but they're both tough as hell i could see it going to decision they're both tough as hell and i could see it going to a lopsided decision man would you run it back if that was the case no give max i want to the light heavyweight division is so clogged. <laughs> I just want to move it forward. If it has to be Max fighting Khabib next, fine. Then I want Tony to get next in line, and then obviously you work out Gagey and the rest later, and Connor. But they gotta move it. It's really, yeah. especially because 
So he can't fight till the end of Ramadan. Tony just said that he's cleared. He said yeah. he's mentally cleared. Good. Good. I'm glad. Right. Pray That's for all those Pray for Tony. That's fantastic. For real. Um, and then obviously the other fight is Israel Kelvin. There's a fantastic card. A lot of violence on that card. For Bola yeah. versus Jalen Turner is another fantastic fight. There's a, uh, there's a bunch of debuts happening that are fantastic. But Roundtree versus uh, uh, oh, Hello Roundtree versus Eric, Eric Anders. Anders. That's a scrap. Even though Eric, I think, is a middleweight and he's really the, hasn't looked great at light heavyweight, but but Khalil's not huge. It's either. a thing now. Middleweight's going yeah. up. Look at Thiago Santos. Look at Luke. Uh, Rockhold's going. Luke to Rockhold yeah. got his fight. Anthony Smith, who just fought for the, the no, ship. for sure. But it's it's Eric's tried it now twice. And yeah, it's, it's a, a thing. Uh, we'll see. I, I like that fight. But so any new thoughts? We've, we've spoken about it before. Kelvin but, and Anderson? Yeah, Style Bender versus I think that, Kelvin and Gastelum. I think we both, we talked about how Kelvin is going to have to pressure and make it dirty boxing to the point where he can grapple to bring Anderson down. And, and subtle. It's, it's going to be a really... He needs Eddie Bravo mentality. It's going to really be a fight about angles. Kind of like Dustin and Max, about, about how Israel's goal is going to be to make the cage bigger, constantly be moving yes. around and fight at a distance, and Kelvin's well, going to have to cut off the angles. Yeah, he's going to have to cut off the angles and make sure that he can't go anywhere and get inside quickly. So, I mean, look, it's really going to depend on that. It's going to be lopsided either way. I think it's either going to be a really? Kelvin lopsided if Kelvin can... And KO him. or sub for him? It could What's even more be likely? a finish. It could even be, a, I mean, a decision, but lopsided. What I'm saying, if, if KO... I don't see that. I, I don't see a lopsided decision in Kelvin's favor. I, I see that. I see him really? holding him on the ground and... Interesting. For, for, for however many rounds, it's well, possible for sure. Yeah. And I, I think that, but it will be lopsided. I don't yeah. think it's going to be a close fight. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? I think one one game plan is going to be implemented yeah. better than the other. Honestly, I think Kelvin is still a little young in the IQ sense. I think with all the kickboxing matches that Israel's had, even though they're similar age, mm -hmm. I think Israel has vastly more experience. So I think that Kelvin cannot win a decision. But I do think Kelvin could get a knockout. I also think that he could submit him if he implements the Eddie strategy. I don't think he's going to implement the Eddie strategy because I think he it's believes a, his boxing is superior. He's great. He's a good boxer. And I think he believes in his boxing as superior. He's got a great boxing feel, but he's not, not a better kickboxer. He's not a better kickboxer. Kings MMA coaching. Yeah. I believe he trusts in that striking. I don't think he's a better kickboxer, but he may be a better boxer. In Israel, but there's, yeah. there's a difference. Well, do you think he's a better striker? No. Okay. No. But I, I think that he can do it well enough to get a lucky KO. Of course, anybody can. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's going to be lopsided either way. Um, and then there's what else? Is it Anything about? else MMA wise? Bellator. There's a lot of Bellator events. The featherweight tournament coming up is going to be exciting. Um, Did Joe Schilling have his next fight already? No, no. It's I coming up to I can't wait. And then obviously the super fight of Chandler versus Patricio Pitbull is going to be fire. Yeah. I can't wait for that. And Chael Sonnen um, as well, right? He is fighting Machida, yeah. Yeah. That's going to be the good. Drag. And obviously the, the biggest for me Bellator fight is when they, eventually when they do it, it's uh, Musasi versus Lovato. Yes. Josh Barnett, who we've mentioned a bunch already this episode, got signed to Bellator. He signed the contract. Uh, live on Ariel Hawani's show, and there's talks about maybe him versus Fedor. Yeah, yeah, and, and there's a lot of great stuff going, and I think another event that's happening in a couple days is TKO, which is the Canadian promotion. Mm -hmm. So I think the promotion that uh, GSP started out with uh, initially, I'm not entirely... Man, that they're still around? Yeah, but there's a lot of good prospects coming up. Charles Jordan, I want to check him out. We should probably implement a prospect of the week kind of watch thing going on. Hey, if you got any. I got plenty. Um, and I think that'll be exciting. I'm going to check that event out too. But I think we'll close it off there. All right, peace.